Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Today is Tech Tuesday and uh, we are going to put in a 6-speed on a Rogue King from 2003. It actually runs really well. I'm very happy with it and I've been that over the years. Uh, but I think it's time for a little bit of an upgrade, maybe get more mileage out of it and so forth and actually enjoy a 6-gear when I go on my touring uh, trips. So uh, the Rogue King is already updated with a whole bunch of other stuff but uh, now we're going to put in a different transmission. So uh, stay with me and I'll get this thing sorted out. Hopefully within the next few hours and uh, I hope you'll be able to go ahead and get some benefit out of it and maybe to try it yourself or I can inspire somebody to do the same thing as well. So this is how we start. The roking we're going to work on today is this one. As you can see it's got LEDs and all kinds of stuff. It's got some love jug blowers and stuff because I'm driving in Florida and it's really really hard. Um, we have to take the old primary thing off as well and then on the other side we we'll have to go ahead and change the transmission in here and then we'll go ahead and assemble it all again and that's basically the whole idea or the, the general overview. In order to get that far I've uh, ordered some stuff from uh, Midwest Motorcycle Company and basically this is the kit that comes with it. It's a lot of gizmos I know but um, we'll get them all organized in a second and then we should be fine. I just opened the package from them and in here there's a reference manual for bikers that's in here as well there's all the different gizmos that was on the picture a second ago and then underneath you'll see as well the new transmission that we're going to put in also some of the changer forks and everything else that should uh, be on there and also the new drive shaft of course so uh, all of this is going into the bike within the next few hours and i hope you enjoy it uh, the only thing that i can see that is missing in this kit when you order it is all the gaskets that you need on the uh, primary side with uh, the clutch and all that, the big gaskets, also the inspection plate gasket and so forth, that's not in here. So you might want to order that before you take it all apart. I really believe this one here will actually have a performance increase and also a mileage increase by doing that. So that's what we're going to attempt to do. Stay tuned. The gaskets you're going to need, uh, let's say outside of what actually comes with the box, are the gaskets for the inspection plates, the clutch plate as well. You have it for the big primary round, but also behind here when I take it apart, you will see there's also one up towards the um, uh, the hot section of the end as well. That thing has to be changed as well. So uh, make sure you go ahead and order that, or at least start early if you want to finish the job, so you have it at hand, or maybe have a place at a dealership somewhere where you can actually get these gaskets. Well, getting organized is really imperative in this case as well. So I have arranged all my setup on this side with all what I need uh, as of right now. And um, then I have also set up all the stuff on that side over here with uh, everything I basically need as well. I have set all the stuff up over here as well. I'll leave it in the back for now. And then this part, there's a line, a visible line on the table. This is actually made for the parts that come out of the bike. And this is going for the part that goes into the bike over here. You might have to uh, use heat to get the uh, connectors apart if they haven't been taken apart for a while. Uh, and then once you get it loose, I lose to use some WD-40 um, to put in between to get it actually to move again. So uh, it can be really, really stuck in there, but just take your time, don't destroy anything, and they will come off. Now the exhaust is removed, and uh, as you can see, you got a lot more space to work on your transmission whenever you get that far. So, uh, from now on I'll go on the other side, on the left side of the bike, and then now I'll we're actually trying to work off of the primary. I've just made a little bit of a drawing here which makes it easier. So whenever you take any of the uh, bolts out, make sure you put them in the right place. That way they won't fall anywhere and you just have to memorize where this is and then you have all the stuff that you need right in your hand. That way when you want to put it back in again, you'll be ready to go whenever that time comes up. So it's a little bit easier for you and you don't have to worry about it. Even though if you have a project over maybe a week or maybe 14 days, you'll be able to put everything back into the normal position. Your pedals and so forth. And now I'm going to go ahead and take the last part of all the bolts and then we're going to remove the cover. Easy. Once you have it off, then you can bring this down nice and easy like that. And once you have it down, you can bring this out. And once you have that, you can tilt it slightly a little bit more. Oh, sorry, there you go. So you can tilt it slightly a little bit more like this. And once you have that, then you just tilt the thing nice and easy over here. And it's out of your working way. Now you got space for everything else. And then you should have actually plenty of workspace to do the rest here. So before you take everything apart inside of your uh, inspection hole here, you can uh, basically see that um, the chain is held up by a mechanism over in the side. 
and uh, you might want to mark that off uh, where the bolt is there's like a whole bunch of small marks all the way up make sure you have the same spot that's going to give you uh, or be able to go ahead and put it back to where it actually was before you took it apart so uh, I'm going to mark this off with a little bit of white marker and that way I know exactly where the tension is where the chain is going to be when I'm done and when I'm actually assembling the bike again the um, clutch sitting over here and uh, we'll take those six bolts off now and um, then we go ahead and take the um, the chain off and all that stuff as well now these six bolts there they're starting going into being metric it's a 10 metric 10 as you can see taking the clutch off now it just came off in one big mold basically like here so uh, i'll leave it in the oil or actually the transmission fluid that was in there to start with that will remain wet in the whole process until i'm done with the project over here this one is a lift to tighten so it means i'll have to go ahead and turn right to get it off this one has normal um, rotation so to get the clutch hub assembly off, you might have to use heat as well in this case. And um, because it's actually connected with Loctite as well. And then it's tightened up with a, a lot of torque as well. So just heat that one up and it's going to go ahead and melt the Loctite on the other side. And it will make it easier for you to, uh, to loosen it. To loosen it, you'll have to go ahead and make sure you do it in the uh, clockwise direction. That's how you take this nut off. Same thing with this one, make sure you get this all heated up as well, so the Loctite, it's red Loctite, it tolerates a lot more heat, uh, it's gonna basically melt and then you can take this off easier. This comes off counterclockwise. Now use that little tool, buy for 8 bucks, it's worth it, as you can see I've used it a few times. Put it up underneath the, um, the chain up here, there you go, and then once you go ahead and tighten it, it's gonna go ahead and make sure it doesn't run anywhere, and it's gonna come off very very easy. It needs more heat thing that actually gives you some heat and that will uh, release the Loctite if you have a little bit of patience. And this time I got it loose but don't rush it, just take it nice and slow so you don't destroy anything and make sure why So here's this bracket coming off nice and dandy. You just take your time with it and you should be just fine. So here it is, I can see somebody else have actually had some problems with this before. So this is how it looks like now. We can take the whole assembly off in one piece. I'm gonna keep it apart a little bit. And the reason why I'm gonna keep it apart that is that I don't want the chain to change any teeth in here as well. I want it to stay on the same teeth so the wear and tear is gonna be the same at any time. So the whole thing comes off as one big piece and I'm gonna put it over into the, um, basically into the, uh, the oil bath that where I have my clutch as well so they can live next to each other in the same fluid that was in this compartment to start with. So just leave it in the same fluid and you should be fine. Well, remember any frustrations once in a while to go ahead and make sure you stay hydrated and it is taking a little bit more time than you probably would have expected. But uh, enjoy. So here we are and uh, we've got the whole clutch primary assembly off now, uh, more or less. Uh, we're getting to the end of it basically in this part um, over here we got to go ahead and take that little plate off as well and there will be coils on the other side and it's very magnetic so it can be hard to get off I'm normally using a little bit of a uh, what do you call it? a hex key and that should be able to go ahead and get it off slowly make sure you don't get anything you know, hit up in there or hide me up in there or whatever because it could actually also leave some um, residue left of all kinds of metals but once you have it off it should be just fine see now it's coming off I just need my other hand so I'll be right back now once you have this part out um, you can go ahead and check it for debris or other stuff, stuff as well it is magnets so if there is something floating around the oil or whatever it might be it will probably reveal in here as well so just can make sure that this is completely uh, clean as well um, that will give you that indication. On the other hand, in here you got the rest of the magnets as well. So check them out. You have no wear and tear and everything looks kind of normal before you continue the process. But that's basically what you're looking at. Now, from here on, we're just going to go ahead and take the bolts out. They're locked as well. And Now, when you do take the other ones out to get the primary off, make sure you do another drawing. These are the outbound, uh, the outside of the primary casing. These are the casing bolts inside. They are different lengths as you can see, so make sure they go into the right place so you know where they go again. That way you won't have any problems when you assemble the casing when you're done. Since we're going to deal with the starter and everything else and we got some neutral things on the neutral gear and everything else that's going to be electronics involved, 
we're going to remove the um, negative side of the battery. I got a lot of accessories in this bike, so that's what we're going to do. So, so from here, since everything is taken off all the way around, I'm going to go in and take the two cover bolts to the starter, which are located uh, right there. It's two hex bolts uh, actually sitting in there, uh, and they just have to be loosened, and I should be able to take the whole cover off. I've taken off the tensioner here as well. I didn't move it anywhere. I just took the snap ring off nice and easy. So I've taken the retainer plate off so now I can get to the knot in here. This is 1 7 8 of an inch so it's quite a big one that comes into me here in about another few hours and then we can go ahead and take the whole uh, wheel off. In the meantime I'm going to go ahead and remove the um, shifter shaft here as well. There's a washer and on then here. I'm going to take out this torque 50 uh, as well so everything is apart. And then I'll go on the right side and then I'm going to start loosening the, uh, the top cover here. So now we went over to the right side after completing the uh, left side except for getting the drive off over there but uh, we'll do it in a second. So what I've done over here I just loosened the screw for the transmission and then drained the oil uh, off the transmission right now. So here we are on the right, uh, sorry, on the left side of the bike again, and I got the gear shifter right here, and this is the adjustment for the gears shifting up and down mechanism. Just removed that T50 bolt, and now uh, I took off the top cover as well. In order to, take, to get to this part, I uh, took the starter slightly back over here, and it should give me enough space to put everything in there. Or if you have trouble with it, you can also go ahead and remove it completely, then you definitely have enough, uh, enough space to work on. So that's uh, one way of doing it. However, uh, when you have that taken apart, make sure that you cover everything up. And as you can see, I already did one here that could be a little bit of a, an interesting thing happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a tie wrap or zip tie around that one to make sure it's out of the way so you don't drop anything into your transmission box. So here we are on the uh, shifter ratchet, uh, ratchet as well. On top there's a small spring. I'm just going to lift it up slowly and let it fall on the other side. And that should enable me to move this uh, nice and dandy over here without dropping anything in. So it's out of the way. And now I can take these four bolts off. I'll take them off uh, one after another of course in a crisscross pattern. And then after that I should be able to lift up um, the shifter itself. They will actually expose the forks, the shifter forks on the other side and then it's just a matter of getting this disassembled and we can pull the whole thing out. So in my case I got this special tool, you just put it back on here, there we are, and then you put on the socket like this and you go ahead and try to get it off. And in order to take it off you have to go ahead and go in the clockwise direction. It's uh, I heat it up slightly, not a lot, but uh, then I put it on my uh, electric power tool here as well the electric wrench with a little bit of hammering on there as well and then it suddenly just comes off so uh, now it's just to go ahead and remove it and uh, we'll continue the process there we go i think you better see now so i'm just going to take this off and slide it out slowly and uh, there we go and then just inspect it that it looks okay and it looks absolutely perfect i'll clean it up later um and then we'll take it from there there we are, it's a little hot at the moment. Let me get the drive belt out of the way. Don't break it too much, but uh, take it away so you know that you get space to work and everything else. So now we're cleaned up over on uh, the left side and uh, we got everything out. Everything's taken uh, care of basically. The uh, only thing I need to take off now is this razor right here, but uh, we have a little bit of trick to that. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of a blow on the other side so I'm gonna bring the axle through so I'll have a little bit more space uh, up here so I can actually pull it off afterwards so from here on, I'm gonna go and work over on the right hand side of the bike and we will go ahead and take all of this stuff and also bring out the transmission in a heartbeat so I've come to the conclusion I'm gonna to have to remove this anyway because I gotta get in here both to the speed sensor and also I have to get the whole transmission out here in a second so now I got the whole area here removed uh, for the oil filler there we go and this removed as well so now I got a better access to the whole transmission so now I'm gonna go ahead and take it all apart and move it out so I'll we'll take this off crisscross pattern off as well when I take this up here, I just take it very, very slowly to make sure all four dowels are gonna sit and remain seated in the seats because otherwise you might drop them into the box. I just put it into in between gears so it's not in gear. Once you have selected two gears, so it's engaged in two gears, 
the uh, gearbox itself is not turning you see you see right there it actually doesn't turn anymore so it's stuck and that means now I can take this bolt off I can loosen it slightly so I can uh, move that main shaft on the other side a little bit further out and I'll put the um, the pulley on that side and get the sleeve pulled off and that's gonna go ahead and enable me to take the whole gearbox out in a second once you take the shifter forks out they're gonna fall off in here as well as soon as you take them out make sure you put them on your uh, pin here again in that order that they were taken off that way you can always get them to the right position again uh, without actually thinking too much about it so we're taking it out like this put it back on then this one here you go and then this one now at least you have an idea where they were seated before so now you can put it back in so that's the easiest way to do it it's also described in the manual after the shifter forks are removed, we can uh, give it a few dead blows and it should move the axis slightly on the other side. Let's see. There we go. It's moved and I think that's just enough to get the axle to expose itself on the other side so I can get some lead room behind that collar there and be able to pull that one off. If that makes sense in any way. Here we go. That's the one, and that is really, really tough to get off. It can be. So now since we got the collar off over here on the axle, we can now start on this side as well. So now I'm gonna loosen these screws all around, and then I should be able to go ahead and take the transmission all the way out. So, now I'm ready, taking the speed sensor off. Once that's off, I'll give it a small tap on the other side, and the whole track door is gonna come off. So now the speed sensor is out, and um, there was a little bit of debris on there. It's a magnet as well. We'll have a look at that later. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a small tap on the other side and then the trap door should be coming out. <clears throat> Comes slowly. Just go ahead and try one more time. So here we are, give it a tap. It can be tightened as well. And there we go. Now the uh, complete transmission box is basically clear. Let's see if we can get it out. Here we go. Let's take it slowly. Just take your time. There we are. And it is out. Make sure you clean the old gasket off as well before you put the new one on. So make sure the whole thing is really clean all the way around. Just make sure you don't make any holes either. Time to take the uh, shifter out. There we are. Now it's ready to change that small washer or the small uh, seal that's over there as well so it should be fine alrighty guys we're uh, the progress is actually well on here on the way as you can see everything is out and as you also can see here I got a little bit of a socket that I put in like this and what I'm trying to achieve here is actually um, right in the set I got everything kind of organized over here as you can see there's a lot of gizmos here uh, but in the set you got this little needle bearing that's in here as well Closed in the other end, completely closed. I'll take it out of the box here in a second or out of the back here so you can better see it. Here you go, it's a closed one. And um, as you can see, the bearings are inside of it. It's supposed to go on your gearbox here on the transmission. And that end is actually holding that axle in place inside the gearbox. Now, <clears throat> it's actually provided with a set here as well. And uh, I'm trying to take out the other one. It's the one sitting over in this area, uh, right in there. Can be a little bit dark to see it. Let me see if I can get you um, a little bit of light. So here we are back in the gearbox. We've got the dry unit over here, uh, but this is the bearing I was talking about. That one sitting right there. It's a needle bearing uh, right there. And that's, as you can see here now, I just got it to move about, uh, what, seven of, uh, well, maybe a quarter inch, not even. 
but what I've done is to take it out um, I'm taking a top or a socket that fits just inside of it so you get a clean kind of blow on it and then just with a uh, blow hammer with I use my sand hammer here I just nice and then you make sure I kind of hit and kick it out slowly very very slowly and then it'll come out on the other side so I'll change this bearing as well that way everything in the gearbox is completely new there it was and uh, now we got a hole straight through so here we are the bearing is now out as you can see it was supposed to be there and uh, I just took it from the inside and then I gave it with a dead blow hammer nice and easy just working its way out through the side on the left hand side now this uh, bearing seal that's in here on the outside remove that it can be hard to get out you might have to uh, be a little bit rough on it but it should come off nice and easy once you get that out behind here there is a um, another small snap ring it's actually quite a big one and it actually holds this bearing in place in there as well here you need to have a um, very kind of good set of uh, snap ring pliers go for a big one I'm using this and um, it does require a little bit of extra force to get out uh, unfortunately I already did that but I, did, I thought I had on film but I don't unfortunately it wasn't running at the moment but anyway um, one you have once you have that in just squeeze together and then pull it nice and dandy out make sure when you take it out that you do not destroy anything on the outside uh, after that there is a nice little gasket right here this one take that out and keep that aside as well now you have everything exposed here and basically you have the drive uh, axle here is now ready is only pressed into the bearing so now we just have to pull this out that side and then we can take out the uh, bearing with our fingers on the other side you see it's actually already loose uh, so what I'm going to do now to make sure that the next one goes in and goes easy in I'm going to go in and put this bearing and that bearing set into the freezer to let the um, metal shrink in so it'll fit in perfectly when I go ahead and assemble the whole thing again I hope that makes sense a little bit so this is the axle itself it just has to be pushed in that way. I don't have a pulley on that, so I'm just going to go ahead and nice and easy use the dead blow hammer and then see if I can get it nice and dandy through the hole. And it'll actually eventually come through. It actually is moving already. We're now so removing it. that inner drive uh, out of the bearing, and um, there's a special tool for that as well. I actually elected to go ahead and get this uh, pulley here instead, and it's actually installed on this side straight through the um, transmission case itself. I'll hold it in and then I actually just pull it nice and easy on this side. And off it is. And it's now off. So now it's just a matter of holding it up this way. Get this one off, nice and easy. There we are. And pulling it out. Here we go. That is basically the drive shaft that's put in there. And then this should be just be able to take out nice and dandy. There we are. So now the whole crankcase is actually ready to be reassembled. And uh, I'm just going to have a little bit of a look at it first. But this is how it looks. So we will have a new axle holder with a needle bearing here as well. And then all of this is going to be reassembled again. That's all from here on. It's just to uh, get straight forward and assemble it and enjoy the show. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, and also hit the notification bell. It will uh, help a lot of people out. And uh, thanks for watching.